we are starting with a new chapter in the unit of human physiology and the chapter is neural control and coordination neural control and coordination in humans there are two systems which are responsible for control and coordination one is the nervous system and this control is known as neural control this control and coordination of our complete body is very rapid it takes place in or through electric signals which are known as nerve impulse and this moves in a particular direction whereas in the second system of control and coordination which is known as chemical control and coordination there there are certain chemicals which are known as hormones released from endocrine glands and they help in control and coordination so in this particular chapter we will be discussing only nervous system and the related things so this neural control is actually the nervous nervous system that we are talking of and it works by this electric uh, signal or impulse so some characteristics of this system it is rapid that means these stimuli or these uh, send, uh, signals they travel very fast and here it works by movement of electric signals or what we call the nerve impulse so it works through electric signals and these electric signals are actually known as the nerve impulse the third characteristic is that these nerve impulse they travel in a particular direction so nerve impulse travel or nerve impulses travel in a particular direction we will be talking about all these things in detail but this is the characteristic now nervous system basically is made up of nervous tissue so it is made up of nervous tissue nervous tissue is ectodermal in origin ectodermal in origin and there are two types of cells in our nervous tissue uh, which makes up the nervous system so two types of cells are there and these two types of cells are one neurons which is the structural and functional unit of the nervous system and the second type of cells are known as glia cells or they are also known as neuroglia cells neurons are sensory uh, uh, special cells which are actually responsible for conduction of impulse so we will quickly draw a simple diagram of neuron and understand various types of neurons each neuron has a cell body which is known as cyton or soma so this part which we have drawn is the cell body this part this enlarged part this is soma or cyton or cell body and from this part we see certain processes which are extending these small hair like processes they are known as dendrites so these are dendrites inside this cell body there is a nucleus and there is cytoplasmic content 
which has some special type of bodies around it. These special granules, these are basophilic granules and are known as Nissel's granules. Nissel's granules are basophilic. That means they get stained by basic dyes and they are basically pieces or fragments of RER, rough endoplasmic reticulum and named after the scientist who actually discovered those. So they are found in the cytoplasmic content of this cyton or this uh, soma. These smaller processes which are extending, they are called the dendrites. Now here we are seeing a long process. This long process is exon. And exon terminates at the end by formation of various such fibers which are known as the exon terminals, exon terminals or the free ends and the solar part is known as the exon end bulb. Now this exon is invariably covered with a sheath. So here there is a cover around it and the sheath is made up of myelin. So this is myelin sheath. Now there are places where this myelin, it acts as an insulator. Myelin sheath acts as insulator and at certain places this myelin is not deposited. Those points or those areas are known as nodes of Ranvier, named again after the scientist's name. So, in a normal neuron, there is the cell body and a long thread-like structure which is known as exon. From the cell body or cyton arise many small thread-like processes which are known as dendrites and a long process which is called exon. In the cyton is present a nucleus and there are some special basophilic granules which are known as Nissel granules named after the scientist and these are fragments of RER which help in protein synthesis. Exon is covered with myelin sheath. This myelin is secreted or produced by cells and these cells are called Schwann cells. So many times we also see these Schwann cells. Schwann cells which actually produce this myelin sheath. Myelin acts as an insulator so when the electric signal or impulse is traveling on it, it these layers they are acting as insulators. There are certain areas where this myelin is not there. Those points are known as nodes of Ranvier. Now this is a typical simple neuron that we have drawn. Neurons can be of various types. So the types of neurons and then we will take up the types of ganglia that we will see in a minute. Let us discuss the types of neurons now. Now we can classify neurons on various categories. The first is presence or absence of myelin sheath on that exon. So based on this, the neurons can be one, myelinated, myelinated and second type would be non-myelinated. That means if this sheath is present on the exon, we call them myelinated neurons and if myelin sheath is not there, then they would be called non-myelinated. This is one way of classifying neurons. The second way of classifying neurons is on the basis of their function or nature. So, sensory neurons. Sensory neurons are the ones which would take the impulse from sense organs to CNS, to central nervous system. 
So those would be called sensory neurons. Second, motor neurons. Motor neurons. Motor neurons would bring the message from CNS to a particular organ. So this would be moving from CNS to the organ. We would discuss this in detail when we come to sensory, motor and mixed nerves. The third classification of neurons is on the basis of arms that they have. First, unipolar neuron. Unipolar neuron. Unipolar neurons are those in which the exon and dendrite, they arise from the same point. So a unipolar neuron would look like, the, suppose I draw the cell body like this. So here is only one branch and from this branch only dendrites and uh, exons arise. Second is, or let us write it as ABC. This is bipolar neuron. In bipolar neuron, from the cell body, there is one exon and one dendrite then such a neuron is known as bipolar. And third are multipolar, multipolar neurons. These are the most common neurons that we talk of. The diagram which we made is of multipolar neuron. Multipolar neuron, this is the cell body and there are many processes, dendrites and only one exon. So, on the basis of how many processes they have, we classify them as unipolar, bipolar and multipolar neurons. So these are the three ways in which neurons can be classified. And we study these neurons in much more detail when we study the chapter of animal tissues. So this is like when we are starting with nervous system, we have to have a recap of what exactly the neurons are. And that is why we are doing it in short. The details of this is in the animal tissue chapter. Now coming to the glia cells. And one more very, very important thing. Neurons do not divide. They have lost the power of division. It is the glia cells which divide. So whenever we talk of brain tumors, tumors are formed due to uncontrolled division of cells. Neurons don't divide. So it is some of the glia cell which has undergone this division and that has resulted into those tumors. These glial cells, they are of three types. First, astrocytes or they are also known as astroglia. Basically, glia word means glue-like, something which is going to hold on to something. Astrocytes or astroglia cells, their function is to hold the two neurons slightly away from each other so that when the impulse is traveling on one, it should not coincide with the impulse which is traveling on the other. Plus, they would also hold the neuron and the blood vessels close. So their main function is to hold neurons at a distance and secondly hold blood vessels close to neurons so that exchange of material can take place from blood to the neuron. This is one type of glia cell. The second are known as oligodendroglia cells. One example of this oligodendroglia cell is Schwann cell. In the diagram of neuron, we labeled the Schwann cell. This is the one which secretes myelin. It secretes myelin, which makes that insulating layer on the myelinated exon or nerves. The third type are known as microglia cells. And microglia cells, they are very small and their function is phagocytic. So they are phago, 
excited in nature. That means they must be engulfing the foreign particles or the germs or the pathogens which are in the system. So nervous system is made up of nervous tissue and there are two cells important. We have not talked about other cells. We will talk about those cells like ependema cells and all when we come to that structure. So these are the two main cells in the nervous tissue or nervous system, neurons and glia cells. Structure of neuron we have seen and this is the brief classification of different types of neurons. And these are the three glia cells. The thing that we have to remember is neurons do not divide. Glial cells or glia cells, they can divide or they do divide. They retain the power of division. So... This is some basic information about the nervous tissue and in the next segment we will take up the nervous system in certain organisms other than humans and then we will start with nervous system in human beings.